Hey, what's up, Reefer? Happy Halloween! As you guys know, one of my favorite inhabitants in my tank is a rose bubble tip anemone. And of course, if you have a bubble tip anemone, we have to have a clownfish, and then we have to have a hippo tank. But of course, hippo tank is not gonna come in here, otherwise, it's gonna be like this. <laughs> don't, 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 don't yank! This actually reminds me of one of my earlier videos in this, on this channel. That was uh, visiting SeaWorld. We got to check out a rose bubble tip anemone tank where I got to like poke my head among all the tentacles. And it kind of like just looked around. Oh really no! Cool. Oh no! What happened? Alright, guys, today I'm at uh, Tropical Lagoon and I have one type of fish in mind. It's actually a pair of Vanguard Cardinal. There's another one in the tank, but these two guys stuck together. So I take that as a sign that we want to stay together. So we're picking these guys up for the mango tank. Alright guys, and here they are, the new addition to the 17 gallon mangrove tank. One major reason I want to keep the Banga Cardinal is that they do not eat pods so that they won't be a food competitor with the uh, blue striped pipefish, which is super important to me. Uh, because for the most part, the pipefish tend to get fed uh, through just picking up pots all day, uh, which has, and he has been doing fantastic. I just supplement this feeding with uh, uh, frozen, uh, frozen mices, a curry mice is a little bit smaller. This guy is doing extremely well. Um, and the reason I wanted to add some bad guy card in is number one, the tank looks really empty because the pipefish is not, it's not super active in the open water. He likes to go between the macros uh, to kind of pick off foods. And number two, I need to constantly dose uh, nitrate and phosphate in this tank to fuel the macro algae, meaning that I need more excess nutrient in the system. And one good way is to feed more in order to feed more without producing too much like detritus and stuff like that is to get fish. Because I need the fish to eat and I need the fish to poop and in turn the poop is going to feed the macroalgae as well as the uh, coral. Alright guys, so here are the Bengai Cardinals getting in. Um, I don't like to use net simply because Ew. I feel like it's going to hurt the fish. Although using hands is probably not the best thing as well for the slime coat, but it was a really quick state. So here we go. Uh, right now, somewhere. oh, they're really popular. These fish are really popular. Um, so they're kind of pale right now because they just entered a tank, mm -hmm. but they should, the color should intensify. Oh, Joseph has one, right? Joseph has one, that's right, exactly. Oh man, they're perfect. Perfect size. The pipe fish is out and about. And of course, one thing to be uh, mindful of when you add Banga Cardinal is that they do eat small crustaceans, meaning that if you have small shrimps, like sexy shrimps and stuff like that, you may want to double check to make sure it's okay. Now this tank is 17 gallon. Um, I typically uh, probably say it should be okay. Uh, 25 gallon may be a little bit better, but if I do feel that at some point they become a little bit too cramped, we can easily move them to the 145 gallon tank with no problem. So that should be okay. But this should provide them with a nice quiet place and hopefully they'll produce some fries and we can uh, try our hands at raising baby fish. That'd be awesome. So now in this tank, we're fully stocked. We got a pair of bang guys and that little pipefish right there. And they should make the perfect tank mates. Banga Cardinal is actually one of the uh, preferred tank mates of seahorse because of how gentle they are. Let's look at them. Awesome. Beautiful. Do you know the secret to a good YouTube video? Hey, what's up, Reefers? I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm absolutely blessed by the awesome reefers that we got locally. Today, we pick up four corals from a local reefer from Wamas named John. I've seen pictures of his amazing SPS setup on our local reef club's forum. Uh, unfortunately, due to COVID, of course, there's no way for me to go visit in person, but he has also shared some amazing photos and videos on his Instagram account. If you want to check it out, I'll leave it right here. The plan is that whenever the COVID actually blows over, I'll get a chance to go and actually film his setup. But in the meantime, I picked up a couple corals from John and we can get a little slice of his reef here first as a sneak peek. As you can see by the size of these little, I'll call them tubs, uh, we got two big pieces and then some smaller pieces right here. Let's talk about the smaller ones first. So for SPS Frag, I picked up the pink lemonade. The second one I'm trying is the red planets. I really like the red planet because of the tabling uh, feature, which I think a lot of people really like tabling aquaporas and I feel like they're relatively common. So they're not as expensive in case anything goes wrong. I I know like tabling acro is one of like these big things and I, I'm a sucker for it as well. And I'm not sure if I'm quite ready to go full SPS. 
Obviously not, looking at my tank. The SPS I have from Lin and TSA seems to be doing okay. I mean, they are encrusting at the base, they seem to be growing. So that gives me a little courage to try some SPS out. All right, next up, I know you are curious what are in these tubs. All right, first tub is, oh my goodness, dude. So John was telling me that his trimming bag is uh, blue fluffy bird's nest pretty aggressively, but I was not expecting a huge chunk like this. And it's even mounted on a frag plug. Dude, John, thank you. You're way too generous. If you have not met my Reef Sensei Telegram yet, I feel like you two will be real good friends. All right, and here's top number two, Frog Spawn. And this is the pink tip green frog spawn. John was asking me, he's like, hey, are you still building out your euphilia garden? I was like, yeah. I was like, all right, here you go. I was like, what? So this is tremendous. This is gonna really fill out my uh, euphilia garden. Oh my God, guys, look at the size of this frog spawn. It is crazy. Where, I'm trying to figure out where to put it. Man, look at this. This is the ridiculous bird's nest. Oh my goodness. And he's kind enough to uh, put it on a frag plug for me. And uh, Leon, what, what are you doing? Meanwhile, our reverse has been an exciting week because the team at BLS has been giving away some massive prices. I've actually placed two order already. I'm not proud of it, but thank you, BLS. Today, we're going to check in with the Banga Cardinals. But before we do that, I want to talk really quickly about the mangrove tree. I've not really talked about the mangrove as much because I felt like I've talked a lot about it already. But I just want to show you the growth that it had over the last couple months. Um, for whatever reason, it really, really exploded in growth. And the tips a couple of you guys left um, in the past video where I should move the light so that the tree grow naturally towards the light versus then keeping the light over the tree and try to use the wires to bend the uh, branches and stuff like that totally hit the nail on the head as you can see the tree really naturally just kind of grow towards the light um, I have a pointed light source not so much a panel so they do have to kind of grow this way in order to get the full effect of the light which is exactly what they're doing eventually I'm hoping that the tree will grow strong enough that I can actually hang the main lights off of the, the uh, off of the mango tree that'll be super awesome but that's gonna be at least like two years down the road all right guys and here they are oh look the african blue striped pipefish is on the hunt so right now the flow is actually pretty strong but i'm really happy to report that the uh, african pipefish is having no problem kind of navigating the uh, currents. But let's take a look at the Bengai Cardinals. They're slightly freaked out because I put the back background on. They're like, what is that? They have been behaving as expected. Uh, for the most part, they hover around middle of the water column. Uh, they are a lot more active when they sense food in the water. Like for example, when I drop food in there, you know what, let me just show you. Got a few pellets of the uh, TDO Chrome Boost. All right, see here, there we go. Going after the food. And as you can see, once they smell food, they can become a, a lot more inquisitive and a little bit bolder. I was able to lure them out, even with the like background in the back. Now I feed this tank multiple types of food, include like liquid food, frozen food, and uh, pellets or dry food. Um, they respond the best to liquid food, the reef nutrition stuff. Um, frozen food, they do respond aggressively as well. Pellets and flake in general, it, it took a couple days for them to get used to, but now they started eating it. So even in the past, uh, in a 45 gallon tank, I started out with a trio of Benga Cardinals, I've never had issue weaning them onto um, dry foods like pellets and stuff like that. They only take a couple days, so they're really, really uh, hardy and easy beginner fish uh, in my humble opinion. It's funny because like sometimes the pipe fish actually swims right up to them and kind of pick at their, uh, their fins because on the fin you see all those little white dots. So I guess the pipe fish thought that maybe there was a food or something like that. Uh, <laughs> so it's kind of interesting to see. Uh, okay, look at that. They thought food is coming. I saw the ah, like all of a sudden got really alerted. Wait, if I flip the, let me see if I can flip the screen. So uh, I'm doing a quick little impromptu experiment. I flipped the, my camera screen so that they see themselves in the little uh, flip up LCDs. Um, I'm not sure, no, doesn't seem to be doing anything. <laughs> Anyways, the bottom line is that the Banga Cardinals has settled in, into the tank really, really well. Um, has started taking in dry food like pellets food and flake, which is fantastic uh, They do not bother the pipefish at all. In fact, I think the pipefish actually uh, pick at them or even bully them a little bit Which is kind of funny to see 
Uh, but for the most part, I feel like they're kind of like the perfect tank mates. Unless, of course, you're trying to feed like frozen food to, pipe, to the pipefish, and these cardinals are actually pretty aggressive little suckers in terms of uh, going after food. So that's something to be considered. And of course, like I mentioned earlier in this video, if you have small crustaceans like sexy shrimps, you may want to think about it because they got pretty big mouths. This macro tank has been a joy to keep, and especially because the macro algae grows so much faster than uh, corals. Uh, it's, it's interesting. It's like every week I look at this tank, it looks slightly different, which is uh, which is cool. It's kind of something that uh, I miss about Planted Tank for the brief stint that I tried with uh, doing a Planted Tank. And I'm impressed by how limbo and how how well the blue stripe pipefish does against the heavier flow. Uh, in terms of flow, the MP10, I have uh, multiple schedules. Um, for the most part, like at night, it's running at like two or three percent, just 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 so it's spinning and nothing goes into it. But for the part of the day, it goes from like 25% to 35% to even 50%, uh, just so I want to make sure that the nutrient get transported to all the corals and uh, macroalgae within the tank and the traders get kicked up. Um, but through all those different modes, the um, African pipefish has no problem navigating. And of course, down the road, I'm hoping that the Bangai Cardinal will do well enough that they'll start uh, making little babies in this tank and I'll get my hands on uh, trying to raise some fries, that would be super awesome. All right guys, I would love to talk more about this tank because this has been a fun tank, but let's take a look and see how the other corals are doing in the 145 gallon tank, shall we? All right guys, here we go. One quick look of the corals that we picked up from John. First of all, you can't miss it. Look at this ginormous frog spawn. It's looking super healthy. Um, fantastic, fantastic color. And with this addition, the Euphilia Garden is one more step closer to completion. As you can see, I stack it right here. So we move one of the older uh, frog spawn up here. I actually dial back the light a little bit because I want to make sure that it does not get light sharked. That's one thing I'm really sensitive to because uh, that's one thing that I did not pay as much attention to before in the past. And I think some corals uh, suffered. So live and learn. Green bird's nest seems to be doing well. Pile of extension is still full and the color is still fantastic. So I'm crossing my fingers. The other two coral, one of them is right there. That is the red planets. And the other one, the pink anemone is kind of hard to see, but it's right back there. So for those two corals, we kind of won't be able to tell any difference for quite a while until they kind of settle in and start growing. But um, based on how the other SPS are doing, it'll be a while, but they seem to be doing okay. But one thing that I'm really, really, really excited to see is actually these bubble algae right here. You see that some of them actually turn silver, translucent, and some of them actually only have like a transparent outer shell. Like the middle portion is gone. I have a feeling it's actually the vibrance kicking in. Look at this guy right here. It's all the same cases right here. So if a ammo crab picked it, usually the ammo crab would burst above first and then eat the tissue. So you won't see a shell like that's remaining. Um, I've not seen the rabbit fish pick at any of them, so I don't think it's this guy yet. I have a feeling it is the vibrant finally kicking in, and that is actually an excellent sign. Actually, let me see back here. Yeah, same deal right here. So up to this point, I've done five doses of vibrance. Let me walk over here and talk about it. For the first three doses, I did almost like half or one third dose. Uh, my tank's volume is 135 up here, probably 15 down there, so roughly 150. So I should be dosing 15 milliliter of vibrance, but I want to be careful, so I was dosing, I think like six milliliter of vibrance for the first three weeks. Not much has happened, so I step it up a little bit to, um, I think like 13 milliliter, which is my display volume, not the full volume. So I did 13 milliliter last week and then 13 milliliter uh, yesterday. So I have five dose in. And usually with bubble algae, people are saying that you see results about seven, seven to eight weeks in. And that seems to be the case with my last tank that I treated bubble algae with Vibrant, which is 45 gallon. Uh, we are at week five right now. And at this rate, I have a good feeling about it. I think we may have won this war. Look at these. Look at all these, uh, that's a translucent one and two of them seems like the middle portion is being exposed and a lot of them are turning silver. So I think, guys, I think we're winning. We're winning the war. We are winning the war against bubble algae. So this is fantastic to see because I've been battling bubble algae in this tank for quite a bit. We've tried manual removal, we've tried rabbit fish, we've tried ammo crabs, and finally we've tried vibrance. And if I may be honest, it seems like vibrance may be the one that's gonna do the trick. But I'm gonna knock on wood real quick just to be safe. Right, Gobi? Yeah. Empty transclusion shell bubble algae right there, right there, right there. 
even closer we got to right here. So to me, I think that's a good sign. Maybe it's Murphy's Law and it's kind of releasing all its spore and I'm gonna have like bubble algae all over the tank. I don't know, it couldn't get any worse. But my money is on, they are actually on their way out. So hopefully in another two or three weeks, the tank will be clear of bubble algae. And then don't tell the ammo crabs, but I plan to get maybe three of them out of the tank at that point and rehome them. And I don't know about the uh, rabbit fish as well, because I do feel like he has actually sampled uh, some of my euphilias. But we'll make those decisions when it gets a little bit closer. Right now I'm maybe uh, celebrating a little bit early, but this is kind of like one of the very few times that I actually see like a little uh, bright light at the end of a tunnel in terms of battling bubble algae. So I'm, I'll take it, I'll take it. Oh, look at this, it's feeding time for the fish again. I think the fish is uh, just living life. Look at them go. I got this happening like maybe like five times a day uh, for I think one minute each time. And I think the fish is uh, getting the schedule down. Look at them go. Nom 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 nom. Actually, since we're looking at fish right now, I'm gonna tell you a quick little news. Um, I got a local vendor who is keeping an eye out uh, for me for Empius, and he got some in. And he's actually quarantining them for now. Uh, we may be adding a couple later Empius. I, f uh, I think maybe like three, probably three or five, depending on size, to kind of complete and round out the population for this tank. So I'm really excited for that to happen. It may happen in a week or two, depending on the quarantine uh, process. So I'll keep you guys posted, but I can't wait to stop having to dose nitrate and phosphate to this tank. I want some fish poop to feed the corals and the refugium. Right guys, you guys want more friends? And with those addition, uh, this tank should be fully stocked uh, besides maybe like uh, dragon nets or like little gobies. Welcome back guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment. I will see you guys next Sunday at 12.30 p.m. sharp. Bye. Embarrassing. <laughs> Look at this. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. It's so gross.